Yo, what's up, everyone? It's Potty here from Rinkside and showing you how to pick, you know, a superb fantasy football team. And what we're going to be using here is beer sheets. You can go to the link in the description to get access to this. It's hosted on Football Absurdity. All you got to do is come in and customize the settings with those that are relevant to your team. As you can see, I'm in ESPN. I went to League Settings and then I have the settings for the league that I'm in. So after you populate those onto the Beer Sheets page, you simply press Submit Request, and now you're able to download it. So um, what I'd recommend is downloading the Excel spreadsheet. Opening up a new Google Sheets then clicking import and then upload. Throw that in there. Replace spreadsheet, import data. And boom, now you've got your own beer sheets. Um, we'll walk through how to use this in the next video, but you can tell that it works just by something like that. We're looking at our beer sheet on the right, and for those in our full screen view, I've also pulled up um, beer sheets like a how-to guide on the left. But if you're on mobile, you probably can't see that, so you're probably just listening and seeing where I'm clicking. So ultimately, this beer sheets gives you a framework to determine what priority you should take players in a specific order, and then it's also kind of like a toolkit that enables you to mark when a player has been drafted, either by yourself, someone else. You can flag if they're injured. You can kind of put priorities and whatnot. So let's just look at the beer sheets from the start. Um, you'll see that there are kind of three sectors in here. We got quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. And then down here, we've got tight end. Don't forget about tight end. And then at the bottom, we got defense and special teams. Um, I understand how the rankings and orders go for everything, but despite being a kicker in the SFL, I don't really understand how this defense and special teams works. Um, so my suggestion is just to pick those players last. What I can tell you is that if you're starting off in the draft, let's go through a hypothetical scenario of how you're going to use this. Let's say you've got the first pick in the draft. Who are you going to draft? So the primary metric you're going to be looking at is the one in bold VAL, that's value. So you're going to be looking at which player has the highest value. So it's already pre-ranked by that, by each kind of player type sector. So you can see that the highest uh, quarterback is a 6.4. Josh Allen, um, Jonathan Taylor is the highest running back with an 11.3. Cooper Cup is the highest wide receiver with an 11.4. And Travis Kelsey has the highest uh, for a tight end with 8.0. So if I had the first pick, according to beer sheets, I would be using this on Cooper Cup because he is an 11.4. Now, if I were to draft him, all I'd put is a little Y right next to his cell, and boom, now it's colored green, he's on my team. If I were in second place and somebody just, you know, drafted Cooper Cup instead of a Y, I'd just put an X, and that takes them off the board. So in this scenario, let's say I have the second pick. Um, the first pick just went to Cooper Cup. Who am I going to pick? Under the same methodology, you know, quarterback 6.4, running back 11.3. We already looked at them. No, nobody's close. So I'd be selecting Jonathan Taylor um, and I'd put a Y. And there would be, you know, my pick. Um, as you're running through the draft, you might come across some players that are injured. Um, say somebody down here. Uh, hopefully not to give any bad luck. You could just throw an eye on there or really any character. Well, it kind of still looks like an eye. This doesn't. Um, anything, or you could um, say it's your pick coming up in five and you're pretty deep into the draft and you're kind of looking at like, who do you want to pick? You could go like one, two, three, and this kind of helps you um, be able to identify you know, who your next picks are. So there's a lot of things you can do with the color formatting, but let's look back at like the data and the attributes that are available. So 
Uh, another attribute you're going to want to be looking at is this PS. This stands for positional scarcity. You'll notice that the values of all players do actually dip into the negatives. So there's a threshold for about 0%. And so what positional scarcity is saying is for all of the po positive value players, according to this valuation left, you know, how many will be left after this player is drafted? So after Jonathan Taylor goes, there's still 92%. Um, it's something to consider when you're in maybe in the mid position in a draft and you're going to have to wait, you know, 12 turns to come back to you. Um, if you really need a position, you know, you might take someone before the drop goes down to a significant level. Um, let's look at another thing. So uh, an, I would call this an attribute or a data point is the kind of banding of the color coding. So we can see um, Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey are kind of in this gray and then Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry are in white. What this gray or white formatting is basically groupings. So even though Austin Eckler has a 9.2 and Derrick Henry has an 8.2, it's basically saying that they're on the same tier. It's not to say that they would be a complete one-to-one -one match if you had to pick one or the other, but it does say that you'd be getting a near fair value by the election of any of these kind of tiered players. So it's just another way to kind of group. Um, another thing you might want to look at is this ECR. ECR stands for the expert consensus ranking. So you can see that they took a bunch of experts and basically um, averaged out what the um, the round they would go in and the pick they're in. So according to the ECR, Christian McCaffrey would go in the first round as the first pick, then Jonathan Taylor um, as a second pick, and then Austin Eckler. And it wouldn't be all the way until the sixth pick that Cooper Cup would be um, picked. So it you know, take that for what it means. I would trust the beer sheets valuation when you're looking for players to elect, but you also might see that there's a player potentially like their valuation is a lot higher than what the rankings are suggesting. So it could be a really strong value play to add um, uh, a player with a late ECR um, early because of like the valuation. Or you could look at it the other way. Ultimately, what I'm going to hand off to you is the um, how to use Beer Sheets Guide, and then um, we're going to walk through the application of this in a real draft environment. So I'll talk to you then. All right, so we pulled up the draft. It looks like it's not going to start for another 51 minutes. So that gives us a little uh, comfort for getting used to, you know, where we are. Um, so basically, I'm picking number three, the Chicago Rillas. Um, is coming up and what I thought that I would do right now is just to um, begin to queue um, or key uh, my team. So one way that I can do this is simply by just figuring out what their value is and then going ahead and entering that into the ESPN. So we got one, two, three. I'm not going to narrate the rest of this, but you can watch along as I speed it up. <laughs> All right, so I just did the first 30 picks, and um, now I'm going to queue them over into the ESPN draft. Honestly, I could do this for the entire draft sheet, but I think it's going to take a long time. All right, so while I was going through the rankings, came to number 17, C.D. Lamb. Um, looking over here on the updated ESPN rosters, looks like CeeDee Lamb is questionable. So I, instead of putting him in my queue, I'm just going to put a queue on here and, you know, we can come back to this at a certain point, um, depending on where he lands in the availability and what information I can gather according to what this queue kind of stands for. So with that, going to continue to, um, add people to the queue. All right, so as you can see, our queue has been built. Um, we can continue doing this or uh, we can just kind of film it in live time and kind of edit it on the go. But I like doing this to start as it just kind of gives you a good perspective on where your first few picks are gonna go. 
So we'll pick this back up when the uh, draft actually begins. All right, so the draft has started up and it looks like the first team is on the clock. So we're just gonna have to wait for them to pick and then we'll update our sheet. So it looks like they took Cooper Cup, who is my pick, and then Jonathan Taylor. Which leaves another three, Christian McCaffrey. So that's basically the pace of this. Um, we'll maybe revisit some things in the future when we get out of the yellow players. Um, but till now, it's just kind of following the same formula and executing on your, you know, your rankings and valuations. And so it's my pick right now. The top available wide receiver is a 6.1. The quarterback is a 6.4. I should pick the quarterback. Um, I really don't want to pick a quarterback. So I am going to take Quan Barkley, who is, according to my cue, you know, my second up. All right, it's my turn. We just, let's see, James Conner just went. So we got Keenan Allen. Looks like that's who we'll pick. And that's nice because it uh, gives us a wide receiver. All right, so they just took Marquez Brown, who's a receiver. Okay, let's see. So we got a QB with a 3.9. You got a uh, running back with a 2.4, wide receiver with a 3.9, and then we got a 4.1 Darren Waller. I don't even see him on here. Darren Waller. Oh, he's questionable. Okay, fuck. Okay. Mike Williams. Okay, the pick is in DK Metcalf. So let's see what we got. We still got the 3.9 Justin Herbert, and then we've got a 2.4, 3.2, and we've got a 3.7 George Ketzel, Kittle. 3.9 versus 3.7. So we either get Justin Herbert, she'd gone in the fourth round. 62%. All right, let's get this guy. Kittle. All right, so they just took Singletary. See what's left on the board. We got Jalen Hurts, 3.6. And we got uh, Dylan, 2.3. Hunter Renfro, 2.3. And Dalton Schultz, 3.3. So I think we're going to take this quarterback. Jalen Hurts. Okay, there were a bunch of picks. So we got Miles Sanders running back. We got a quarterback we don't care about. Tight end we don't care about. 
we're going to go with AJ Dillon or Hunter Renfro. AJ. AJ Dillon should have gone in the fourth round, 12th pick. This guy, eighth round, eighth pick. So we're going to go with AJ Dillon. All right, so it looks like Devonta Smith, who is a lower pick, uh, came off the board. So right now we could let's see. There is uh, Dak Prescott, who's a 2.0. Uh, Tony Pollard, who's a 1.5. Tyler Lockett, who's a 1.5. And Dawson Knox, who's a 1.2. Um, I don't really want to draft another quarterback right now, so I'm going to take Tyler Lockett. All right, so Chase Claypool. And Ramondre Stevenson. So we've got um, Robert Woods, who's a 1.3. There's Tony Pollard, who's a 1.5. It's going to be a bench pick anyways. Tony Pollard was supposed to go in the seventh round. He's supposed to go in the ninth round. He's a 1.5. Let's get Tony Pollard. So we're into like, you know, mid to late, late stage game of the draft. And what's really nice about this year sheets is, you know, I don't know if these players are going to still be available, but you can see that the running backs, all of the value has been cleared off the table. So everyone else is like negative value. So while there's still a number of different wide receivers over here that are positive values. Um, so if, you know, Woods, potentially Lazard is questionable. Um, and, you know, the Ayuk are still available, then we should, you know, pick them up. So now I'm just basically adding positive value players to the key. So we got Woods. Oh, it looks like Stafford just got picked up. Yo, the pressure is on for this pick. Five seconds left. What is it? Sky Moore, wide receiver. Naheem uh, Hines, running back. There is no sky. Okay, so we're going to take Dawson Knox. And we got two tight ends. All right, so I'm on the clock. I got 50 seconds. This is a super hard pick here. Um, I could take Kirk Cousins, the quarterback, but you only get to start one quarterback. So I don't really like that. 10 out of 10. It's 11 rounds. Negative four. Kobe Myers, questionable. Shit. I'm just going to take Mike Jaziki. And you know what? That may have been a terrible decision if you only got one slot for a tight end. Yeah, that was a bad choice. Because come to think about it, the flex is only a running back wide receiver. Now I've got two tight ends. Or maybe it's an advantage, who knows. Uh, but I need to think through who I'm going to get next. All right, so basically now it's down to just uh, defense and special teams and kicker. So I am going to use these ratings. And it says here defense special teams is ranked courtesy of 4 for 4. The columns under each week are the team opponents for the first quarter of the season. 
Cell Shaded Orange are the top 10 easiest opponents for DSTs per 4 for 4. Cell Shaded Blue are the top 10 hardest. So it says they're ranked. Um, I don't know. Doesn't this look like that would be hard? No easy teams? But they're ranked. So let's... Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. It looks like the Colts, but the Colts aren't really ranked very high. So ultimately got to research and determine this. Okay, so I don't think I really understood it, but I'm going to just take an attempt. I'm going to go Patriots. Should we go for the Patriots? Draft them. Hopefully I read that right. right. Last up is a kicker. So let's see. Fantasy pros, that sounds reliable. Justin Tucker. Tyler Bass. Tyler Bass he is. All right, so that completes the draft. Here's the uh, completed form. Um, Who did we get? Yeah, we took the Patriots. I hope I read that right. Um, and we don't have any room for kicker, but this is the final output. Um, I thought it was super valuable. So hope you did too, and hope you used beer sheets. This is Potty signing out from Rinkside.